And we have a great panel. Uh, down at the far end is my friend Steve Norton. Steve uh, was one of the originators of uh, casino gaming in Atlantic City. He worked for Resorts International, uh, was a vice president there for many years before uh, going moving on to Argosy uh, and, uh, and some other uh, interesting casino development sites around the country. Uh, Steve has a lot of experience in New Jersey. Uh, does does not live there as, as none of us do right now, except I live there half the time in the summer. He, he uh, worked at the Taj Mahal. We just talked. He was just there last week and uh, paying his re last respects to the Taj Mahal. So, uh, and uh, his father was also uh, a, a newspaper man in Atlantic City, a well-renowned newspaper man in in the strict sense of the the word newspaper man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so he's got a, he's got a lot of uh, heart there. Um, I started my, my gaming career in Atlantic City as a dealer at Caesars, original dealer at Caesars in 1979. And uh, I've lived there, I lived there for 20 years full time. I uh, moved out here about, about 12 years ago, but I still have a house in Atlantic City. I still consider Atlantic City my home. The, uh, the common thread amongst us all though is that we all love Atlantic City. So uh, you're gonna hear some passion right now. Steve and I sometimes don't agree on, on this subject, but, uh, <laughs> but we'll start. Uh, so let me just lay some background here. Um, we're talking about uh, a possible casino expansion into North Jersey. Uh, Atlantic City has suffered from casino expansion all over their region. Uh, started in Delaware in the early 90s, uh, continued into Pennsylvania in the, uh, in the early 2000s, and New York uh, got on board. So uh, the Atlantic City market has been decimated uh, by competition. Uh, I'll ask Dave in, in a minute uh, what, what the numbers are there, but they're pretty substantial that uh, it really has hurt Atlantic City. And then to have uh, the, your own state come in and uh, say we're going to expand casinos within the state uh, is really not fair. <laughs> Uh, in my view, uh, Steve might have a different uh, slant on that. But uh, so just last week, uh, there, there's been two uh, groups that that have been presumed to be the leaders in getting uh, two casinos in North Jersey. Um, one is led by Jeff Gorrell, who is the owner of the Meadowlands, uh, the big complex, sports complex in North Jersey that includes a racetrack. And the other one is Paul Fireman. He, he's the founder of Reebok. Uh, he's proposing a $4 billion casino in Jersey City right on the river or right across from New York City. Um, the bill that would enable this, though, is, is such a poor bill. Uh, that uh, the polling has been uh, terribly negative on it, uh, which is, and just last week, these two guys pulled their support for the campaign in terms of their, the money they're going to put into it. Now, the referendum still will go on, but there's not going to be any meant much uh, pro uh, advertising for it. So uh, there's also a very organized uh, group in Trenton called Bad Bet New Jersey that, that uh, ha has really focused on the administration, uh, you know, Chris Christie is not the most favorite guy in Atlanta, in New Jersey anymore. So, people who uh, who don't like Christie have been appealed to uh, through this uh, group, and they've been very effective in 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 drawing up as this being being a bad bill. So, and it really is a bad bill. They, while they they approve two casinos, they don't say where they are. They don't say what the tax rate is going to be. They don't say where, what they're going to do with the money that comes from it, and and they don't say uh, you know a lot of things that we, voters need to know to to make up their minds. Now, as a general concept, Steve Norton uh, thinks it's not a bad idea because Atlantic City has lost so much revenue. And uh, if, if by putting two casinos in North Jersey, he thinks we can recapture it. So Steve, why don't you give us a little thumbnail of, on, on your views on it? Well, you know, when I look at the uh, demographics uh, around uh, that area, uh, Eastern Pennsylvania has about 6.3 million people. New Jersey has 8.9. New York, if you include uh, Westchester and Orange County and Nassau County, it has about 13 million. That's a market of over 28 million people. Uh, South Jersey, the, Atlantic, the counties in, Atlantic, <coughs> in South Jersey that are closer to Atlantic City, it's just over 500,000 people out of 28 million. So you can see the problem for Atlantic City, especially midweek where people want to, if they're going to go out to gamble, they want to go out and come back quickly. They don't want to take a two or three hour drive. So they're looking for something that's within an hour's distance. Um, you know, when I, when I reposition the population based on nearness to sites, I come up with uh, North Jersey with uh, about six million support. Uh, and 
the aqueduct, which is doing 800 million in slot win alone right now, uh, with uh, quite a bit less than that, uh, about 5.4 million. So the population is there, and the, the gro market growth is going to be part of the, the situation here. Uh, wherever you add casinos, you get growth because it's convenient, especially Monday through Thursday nights. Uh, the, the market has already grown, even though Atlantic City has, has taken a hit of over 50% of their revenues from 2006. When you add all of the revenues from Yonkers and, and Aqueduct, that's a billion three a year. You add the Eastern Pennsylvania casinos, uh, and I'm not sure the current data on that, but I know it's substantial, it's more than that. Uh, you, and when you add Maryland, which was once part of Atlantic City's market as well, you've got about a 30% market growth already just because of all of the additional casinos added. Now, adding a casino in, the, say, the Meadowlands, which is my favorite spot because of the access and the nearness to Manhattan, you gain, um, you gain 20, you gain about 20 million uh, business travelers who are staying in Manhattan who are looking for something to do at night, another 15 million um, vacationers who are on weekends who are looking for something to do, maybe not as much as the, the, the midweek group, but the midweek group, they're affluent business travelers, conventioneers, trade show attendees. So they're a very, very incredible group. Now, right now, they're spending very little on gaming. Some of them may go to Aqueduct occasionally, but they don't have tables, and the more affluent people prefer table games. So if they want to go to a table game, they've pretty much got to go 70 miles to Sands Bethlehem. That's the closest one to Manhattan. And they run an awful lot of buses out of Manhattan to, uh, to, to that. In fact, at one time, we had 14 million bus visitors coming to Atlantic City, mostly midweek. And that number down is less down over 90%. Uh, so we've lost our midweek bus business, what we need to do is become more like Vegas and become a midweek convention destination. When you look at Las Vegas Strip, the 23 larger strip properties, and compare it to, say, the boardwalk in Atlantic City, um, where the, the occupancy, the boardwalk was 77%, the average weight was $92. On the 23 larger strip properties, the average rate was 163, and occupancy was over 92%. So there's an incredible difference, and it shows how much conventions have had to do. In fact, I was president of the Sands when we opened this expo center in 1990, and we had to house Comdex, and nobody wanted Comdex customers. There were 170,000 of them. Nobody wanted them because they didn't gamble. So. Sheldon called me in and said, you're going to have to be a reservation manager this week. And so I started calling my friends in the industry, and I said, look, we're going to make money for you. We're going to triple your room rate. You've been getting 50. We're going to give you 150. You're going to, you're going to take the comps out of, your VI, uh, out of your gourmet restaurants and replace them with paying customers. You're going to sell a lot of high-profit banquet business and cocktail parties. And you're going to sell all of your public space because we use all of the public space of Caesars, Bally, uh, Hilton, the, the major convention center, as well as this convention center. So we kind of turned things around. In that year, uh, 1990, Las Vegas became the top uh, convention trade show destination in America. So you're saying uh, Atlantic City could become a regional trade show destination if it's done right? It, yes, and you, know, you look at it. If Atlantic City got 150 bucks a night midweek, and they're currently offering rates as low as $40 in the casino, you know, you'd still be a third of what it costs to go to New York to a convention. And we have a question over here. Well, Atlantic City's got union deals in place. There have been some troubles, and that was one of the causes of the Taj Mahal closing. But um, 
the properties are doing okay right now until new competitions open. They've been, yeah, in Atlantic City, they've been fairly flat. What? You're talking about, I'm talking about revenues. Revenues, that, the first six. No, not right now. Uh, but there no, were the quite only, a few the only property over the years. In trouble in Atlantic City and is and much of the, most of those bankruptcies were due to the fact that the banks would not loan to casinos in the early days. We had to use high, we had to use junk bond debt, fourteen percent debt that Mike Milken worked out uh, at Drexel Burnham. Well. Because they are so much more convenient to someone else now. So why come to Atlantic City when you've got a casino that's uh, one hour away? Revenues have have uh, have margin have uh, settled down now. I mean, we've hit the bottom. No. Well, six, 2006, we had 5.2 billion in casino win. That is, yeah. That is now down to uh, something over two billion dollars, so it's down over fifty percent. Okay, let's give Dave a chance yeah, here. Give Dave, me a Dave chance knows here. the numbers I'm, better I'm than I'm on any the of panel, us, so. <laughs> so let me talk. So I totally lost my train of thought, but here's what I want to say. I want to go back. The tragedy about Atlantic City is that everything was completely foreseeable and was foreseen. If you go back to 1977 when they're drafting the legislation, and you were there. And you know, I helped draft it. Yeah, Governor Byrne is saying, look, we need to get open because the Catskills in Florida are coming. That didn't happen, so there was maybe a five-year breather, and I think everybody let their guard down and was not ready for the competition that was inevitable that was gonna come. Where Vegas is different, and by the way, let me say, probably the best thing that could have happened to Atlantic City would have been if there was a really huge, let's say Hurricane Gloria was way worse, and wiped out most of everything, and they had to rebuild it. If you look at the Las Vegas Strip, that's pretty much what happened in the 90s. They completely rebuilt the physical plant. If they hadn't have done that, basically, it would have been, Las Vegas Strip would have been places more like Riviera, which closed last year. So they completely rebuilt, which Atlantic City didn't do. They were able to get open in the late 70s, early 80s, did have some additional casinos added, but they never really did that total refresh. You know, some places are doing, did, I think have done a good job. If you look at Harris, they've done a pretty good job. Borgata's done a good job. Tropicana's done a good job. You know, and if I'm allowed to ramble for a minute, Go ahead. can I ramble? ramble on. I, I just <laughs> want to say this. So one of the things that always struck me about the Atlantic City casinos, one of the reasons why I got interested in researching casinos, is that they put these casinos down as big glass air-conditioned boxes on the boardwalk. And if you know former Golden Nugget, then Valley's Grand, then, well. Atlantic City Hilton. Yeah, Atlantic City Hilton, <laughs> ACH, Atlanta Club. You know, if you know that, the boardwalk frontage is pretty much a blank, black glass wall that is very uninviting. What I really like, you know, having, I was just there this weekend, is looking at the Tropicana, that isn't there anymore. Everything now is interactive with the boardwalk. You know, now if this had happened back in 1980, probably would have been different, maybe not, because the competition would have come anyway. But I think that's just a very important thing, to look at the actual physical, I don't know, how, how they rolled it out. When you talk about North Jersey casinos, the reason they're, they're uh, even being proposed is because, again, we've lost this revenue and, and the tax revenue that went along with it. So the, uh, New Jersey was uh, the first state to, to solve their, uh, the uh, senior, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, prescription right, plan. Yeah, prescription. Uh, what do they call it? The pad plan. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> seniors yes. paid, you know, two dollars for a prescription for many, many years. Uh, as the revenue started going down, now they're paying five dollars. I think that, and there's a proposal now to re increase it to ten. So, you know, uh, Atlantic City was one of the most progressive uh, uh, states. Actually, New Jersey was a progressive state being able to being able to solve that. So they're trying to get that money back, and the way they they want to get that money back is by bringing the casinos into North Jersey. But if you do that then it's going to decimate what's left in Atlantic City. I think, I think we, would, we would lose at least three casinos, if not more. And, uh, you know, again, there's thousands of employees. Atlantic City, uh, the yes. South Jersey region, is already in a, uh, in a recession, uh, almost mirroring a depression.
Jackson. Yeah. Uh, the, the Atlantic City has the highest foreclosure rate of any any city in the country right now. So this is exactly the, the worst time to uh, to expand gaming into North Jersey. But here's, well, oh. you, you got to think um, that if Atlantic City were to get 200 million a year, which is what I think they would get if they adopted the 55% slot tax rate and maybe a 16% tax on tables like Pennsylvania does, seniors should get for 200 million a year. They've lost a billion eight in, in wind tax revenue for their programs since 2006. In a decade, they've lost a billion eight. This would add 200 million a year to them. We'd give 200 million a year to Atlantic okay, City. Okay, but, but who, who, who's going to get the money in Atlantic City? Well, who's going to spend the money? I'm not saying you give it to the city. I mean, no, I'm, God forbid. I'm saying one. <laughs> or you don't want to give it to the CRDA either. They've been, they've been managing a $90 million fund for the past, uh, past f five years, and nothing has improved. So, so one, one I do, thing I, I do like once, the LED lights in the boardwalk. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah is I nice. haven't seen them yet. Yeah. Well, let me, let me just kind of paratroop in here for a second. So let's say. They do get the casinos up in North Jersey. They have the right tax rate. The Atlantic City is getting $200 million a year. How long is it going to take before they have casinos in Manhattan? Well, that's exactly true. That's, there's yeah, probably five there's, years. There's a, plan, there's a plan in New York. As, as soon as the first northern tier casino opens, which is within months now, the, there's a clock that starts ticking on a seven-year where they can open a, a li licenses in Manhattan uh, and the New York metropolitan area. So, so you're going to have the two North Jersey casinos coming back to the legisl legislators saying, we're paying too much taxes. We need the help. So yeah. it's not going to help in the long run. Tony, go ahead. Yes. The, yeah. yeah. Now, Jeff Garral has threatened. He said, Atlantic City, you better get this passed this year. Right. Because if you don't, we're going to come back and we're going to leave you out. Yeah. And he said that in the Coast Guard. Right. Yeah. So, yes, so what, does that, what, what does that, are, do you think he's, because this will not go away. No, this is yeah. definitely coming yeah. back. They, they cannot bring it back next year. I, that's what he's threatening, but I, I don't, they can't pass a bill without helping Atlantic City. It's just not going to happen. Because, first of all, the people wouldn't vote for it because the, the, the campaign that this, this group in Trenton did, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying it's organized. That's a, that's a great campaign that they've done, but South Jersey has not responded to this at all. I mean, the, the politicians are still sniping at each other. You know, the, the, there, there hasn't been an organized campaign. There hasn't been a message that Atlantic City is going to be hurt. But, but I think if a second bill comes back, now the second bill will be way more organized than this bill. It will have its I's dotted and T's crossed. But, at the same time, the North Jersey politicians are also sniping at each other. They want it in their county, you know, and then the, the people in the county don't really want it in their county. So uh, I, think, I think you could even defeat it, if, even if it was a good bill, uh, because, you know, especially if they cut Atlantic City out, because the, 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 the people of New Jersey really have a soft spot in their heart for Atlantic City. That's why it failed in 1974 when it was just a, mm -hmm. you, know, you could put it anywhere in the state, and they came back in 76 saying Atlantic City only, and it overwhelmingly passed. Yeah. So I think people like New Jersey, they want to be able to, to save New Jersey, I'm sorry, like Atlantic City, they want to be able to save it, uh, and, and if there's a, the bill doesn't do that for them, I don't think that'll happen. Roger. Right. At least in election, yep. yeah. how will that affect you? For those of us that have lived and worked there, uh, if I, how many times did we hear Ed Rendell in Pennsylvania say it was the last thing he did in his life, basically? He was going to get casinos in Pennsylvania. Right. And when the first one opened in 2006, it was Sean Corzine that never called anybody into his office that I know and said, how are we going to address this? It just kind of like evolved and happened. Yeah. So, you know, this. Well, here's the problem, is that they've been playing chess, looking at the board as it is. We need leaders who are going to start playing chess looking five or six moves ahead. So just saying we're going to have casinos in North Jersey and that's going to solve the problems of Atlantic City, it's not, it's not a viable solution. You've got to say, well, how do we deliver on the original promise of the casino legislation, which was to reinvigorate the infrastructure and jumpstart the convention business, as Steve was saying. You know, how do we take that to the next level now? Yeah, I think that's definitely possible. Yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Um, I used to live in New York City. And most people in New York City do not own cars. And there is not a good rail, but they tried something. But there is not a good rail connection. 
So the only way to get to the land right. speed was the bus system, mm -hmm. where they overbribed you to get right. on the buses. How much good business do, does Atlantic City currently get from New York City? Uh, not much. Uh, it doesn't get. It gets more from North Jersey, the North Jersey counties. You know, it, it does get you know a substantial amount from from you know the, the island and stuff like that. But but again, they they have more convenient casinos to go to. So mm -hmm. going to Atlantic City isn't really an option for them. You know, f the Philadelphia market has been has been chopped off now. I, I, I think Steve is completely correct here about about the, uh, reviving the convention business. I was there all summer. This, the weekends were, were jam packed. They're actually doing some really good things. Uh, they had concerts on the beach four or five times this summer. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think Atlantic City, you know, is uh, eminently survivable if, if we don't have this competition in North Jersey because they are moving in the right direction. You know, they're they're creating a lot of, of opportunity there. Um, the big problem, however, is city government. Uh, you know. <laughs> Well, you got to remember, yeah. Manhattan only has a population of a million four, right. and they've got they got all those hotel guests I talked about earlier right. that are looking for something to do. But North Jersey has over six million people that would support the Meadowlands. Oh no, no, I, you were talking so, about a casino going into Manhattan. I, yeah, no, I'm just saying I don't. I, mean, I think the Meadowlands would still do as well or better than a Manhattan casino because you've got a lot more local population. The market is going to grow from convenience. It always has. I mean, I look at St. Louis. They, they have a population of about 2.7 million in greater St. Louis, served by six riverboat casinos. They do about $400 per win, per person per year win. Now, you take that on the 28 million people I gave you, that's like $13 billion of win in Atlantic City, Eastern Pennsylvania, and the New York City area. We're nowhere near that. There's a, a huge growth potential in that market. And the, and the New York market is a lot wealthier than the St. Louis market. You know, the individual income is much higher. So, so our expenses, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, the, go ahead, Nick. Well, I don't, I don't live or vote in New Jersey anymore, so I, you know, I, I, it's not like I have a vote. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a long-term solution. I don't think it's a long-term solution because I think, if anything, the past 30 years of gaming expansion shows us that it's always going to move someplace else, and there's no way that they will let New Jersey have this, just like Pennsylvania didn't. Right, and, and again, no way. again, New York is going is yeah. going to approve casinos in 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 the metropolitan area, and even if it's not in Manhattan, you know, summer. you put one you put one on Long Island, you put one in up in Westchester. You know, those are, those are wealthy areas. So so that would that would like completely cut off any New Jersey casinos from from New York. So uh, it's only going to going to tap into the local market in North Jersey, and I think that's not going to well, help. If you just it's, my six million people in North Jersey, if they spent four hundred bucks a year, that's two point four billion. My estimate for the Meadowlands is like a billion dollars, of which maybe 250 million would come from Atlantic City. Most of the rest would, would be market growth, bringing visitors from New York City over, 98,700 rooms in, in Manhattan. Um, you know, and we're, you know, we could do that. Uh, and the, the solution for Atlantic, I mean, look at Atlantic City, 200 days a year midweek, fall, winter, spring, the occupancies are terrible. You look at, at any of the room reservation services uh, that, that book hotels around the world, and you'll find that the rates in Atlantic City will go from a high of five, six, seven, eight hundred bucks a night on a Saturday to less than a hundred bucks a night midweek, and sometimes forty or fifty dollars Especially midweek. Especially in the winter. Yes, go ahead.
sometimes it does not work because here in Las Vegas, one convention alone went to the LBCA and everybody and said, hey, you're gouging our guests. If you do it, we're going to move. And that convention had enough power. They reorganized the way we move people at the airport, and that was the computer electronics show. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, I totally agree. You know, one of the other unpleasant things about Atlantic City now is you get gouged in parking. You know, it's a $5, it's a $10, it's a $20, it's a $25, which to me is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. hey, we've got a big event. Let's, we've got people in. Let's show the city off nicely. Yep, 20 bucks right out of your pocket. Well, you now do now you've got MGM doing the same thing yeah, in Vegas. Right, yeah, yeah. Which is going to, which isn't, I don't, I don't think that's going to help, you know, because then you're. Smart because yeah. You go to a show there on the weekend nights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just wave you on and they pick up the expense of that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's the roommate thing. As far as competing with New York, you know, that's they have to be entrepreneurial. And there has to be a way to pick up on Nicholas's comments to to be able to deliver something that's cheaper. You know, why is Las Vegas so popular? Because people like gambling? No, because they can deliver stuff cheaper to the convention, to the to the meetings planners. You know, that's the thing. There's definitely I think there's room. Well, Steve, Steve has some ideas about airlines, I know that. <laughs> well, I mean, I look at Atlanta. Atlanta has 96 flights a day from Atlanta, Hartsfeld, to Las Vegas, McCarran. That's about 5 million available seats one way to Las Vegas from one city. Now, of course, Atlanta is a big hub, so a lot of the people coming through Atlanta are coming from some other place. But what do we have in Atlantic City? We have one airline that take, takes people on the cheap to Florida and from, from South Jersey and from Philadelphia, doesn't bring anybody into Atlantic City at all. I mean, that's a, I mean we very badly need airline service. They did have a couple years ago, that's what I'm saying, they had United. Well, but that was, that was a deal that the governor made with United to give them, that United gave to get better service in, in Newark. Right. I mean, he, he made a deal to get to give United what they wanted in Newark. Lasted about yeah. six months, you know. And they did, and as you write, they didn't have the right schedule. They didn't have the right planes. They were flying their 50 seaters, which are okay for a short flight, but they're not okay from Chicago or Houston, where they were coming from. I mean, Atlantic, Atlantic City has got a phenomenal airport. They've been adding, improving to it, and we just need somehow to get an airline to actually service it. Right. Frank? Well, if, they're, if they like to gamble, they're not going to find anything to do in Manhattan. And if you look at it, the Meadowlands has bus, rail, car, train service from Manhattan. 15 minutes from Midtown Manhattan to the Meadowlands. Uh, no place, it's much further to go to Aqueduct or Yonkers. So if, if I were in New York, I would much prefer to go to the Meadowlands than the other. Now, if they, but forget that. We've still got six million people in North Jersey, uh, taking away some that would go to the, the, the Poconos, taking away some that would still go to Parks and Bethlehem, taking away some in the southern part that would go to Harris, Chester, and Sugar House. I mean, we would still, we still have over six million people that would support that casino. And that would easily support, and when I say a billion dollars, and on Lang City's only hurt 250. When, when I look at the bottom line in Lang City, a $250 million drop in win is a drop of 50 to 60 or $70 million in EBITDA. So if they're getting an offset, 200 million, I mean, maybe to pay their real estate tax. I don't care. I mean, to me, that would be the, the easiest thing to do was to have, have that 200 million go to reduce the casino's real estate tax. But they would be better off, I think, but the, I mean, Atlantic City has to redefine itself. I mean, I was there in 76 for the referendum before that, and I was there in 77 
to 77 to help the legislature with the legislation. And I was there to help open resorts in 78. But we, you know, and, and we redefined ourselves as a casino town, a, a casino resort. We now have to redefine ourselves as a, as a resort convention destination with casinos. Maybe downsize the casinos, but if we can make money out of the rooms and the food and the beverage and the convention space, like Las Vegas does, then you know we, we can do it. But if we rely totally on casino win, it's never going to happen. Well, I look at your online revenues in New Jersey, and they're very pathetic compared to real casino revenues. Yeah, but they, there's not that many people who gamble online. It's a difficult situation to get online, and actually, online revenues in New Jersey have been have been up for the increase, past 18 yeah. months. Yeah. So, so it's the. Yeah, but the, but we we've already seen the, that that doesn't impact the visitors to Atlantic City. It actually increases the visitors to Atlantic City. Borgata put out a study. You know, exactly. Then, that, so that's you. You you got to remember that a, a, a Las Vegas or a better Atlantic City property like your Borgata, you know, has all sorts of amenities, all sorts of other things to attract you rather than just gaming. So gaming online may be fine for some people, but you know. That's yeah. what I, well, I don't think they can ever get there because they have the convenience. Still, they have people from Philadelphia that are only 60 miles away. So they're still going to get some more convenience play than Vegas does. My, my recent study on that, the, the average of the 23 larger strip hotels won $214 per day per occupied room. The smaller ones were, I can't remember, about 150. In Atlantic City, the boardwalk properties were winning over 550 bucks a day, and the marina properties were winning about $680 a day. Now that's not from the people staying there. So that, that's obviously people coming in off of the street still. I mean, there's no way you can tell me that, that the visitor to Atlantic City is a better quality visitor than the visitor to Las Vegas. Well, in, in Nevada, the better, the 23 better properties, less 34.7% of the revenues come from the casino. The rest come from the other. In terms of profitability, rooms department makes a 63% profit. The casino is around 30. And when you get to the overall situation, <laughs> the rooms department produces right. more profitability than the casino does. Go and ahead, if John. you look at the, get, all the other non-casinos, they produce 73% of the, of the operating profits before you get to overhead. Sharon. Go ahead. I'm sure. Yeah. And so therefore, you know, people, so many people I know that are from, you know, Philly, suburbs and all that, that have, my friends that have vacation homes, they don't see this as important until I say to them, yeah, you might not be voting, however, you pay taxes, don't you? Your budget for the, you know, is going to be affected by that. Do you feel that there's, a, you know, I'm a voter in New Jersey, but do you feel that there's an issue with the voters and the fact that there are so many second homes where they can't vote? I think that's one thing that really skews the community in Atlantic City as opposed to Vegas. I was talking with my wife about this. We were just there this weekend. We were kind of fantasy booking, like, well, hey, if we moved here for whatever reason, where we live? And it's kind of tough because you don't get a lot of bang for your buck in housing. You know, a place we were looking at was half the size of where we're living now in Margate. Block from the beach, but still half the size, no garage, no nothing. Uh, she wasn't into the exposed radiator pipes and stuff, although I thought it was cool. But she's you know, from California. That's like, whoa. Yeah, right. well, not on the beach block. Off, we're off of uh, a block up. But 
And I said, well, it's because the people, and the guy selling it was saying, yeah, you know, this is a great beach house. So they were not selling it for people to live there, which I think changes the politics and everything in the, in the down beach communities tremendously. Yeah. 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 Whereas in Vegas, if you have a pretty large <laughs> voting population, residential population there, I think that's really changed the development of the city in a lot for in a lot of ways. Yeah. What, what airport was that? McCarran. McCarran, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, I can understand that. I mean, you, you've got one of the, Atlanta has the busiest airport in the world, but you've got a very busy one yourself. Well, this is what they're trying to do in Atlantic City with the yeah. beach concerts, and, and that's why I say they're making progress on that. So, you know, if, if we could, you know, stop the North Jersey casinos from happening, if you could build up Atlantic City into the convention destination, Steve suggests you can get the airlines coming into Atlantic City. Atlantic City has a chance to survive. If you can stabilize the government there, which uh, Sharon was just talking about taxes, my taxes for my small house in Atlantic City went up 40 percent this, this year. Uh, Forty percent. I mean, that's just because they the casinos have su successfully uh, appealed their tax rates, so the city has to pay them back taxes. They've just instituted a pilot program payment in lieu of taxes, uh, and and now the the casinos are going to pay the same rate for the next ten years. So the the tax burden, if the taxes increase, are going to is going to fall on the homeowners and the small businesses who are not so lucky to have the influence that the casinos have. So, which. Uh, it, 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 some of it is countywide, yeah, because uh, the county also has to pay into Atlantic City taxes. Yeah. To me, this is totally insane. You know, I know my mom's tax bill in a three-bedroom apartment is about four or five times mine here in, in a five-bedroom house. So it's just insane. Yeah, and, and, and this, this also impacts uh, bringing new attractions into Atlantic City. There's a lot of people that want to come in and, and build an amusement park and, or build, there's, a, there's that one plan for some sort of funny uh, <laughs> roller coaster ride that goes up and it's completely oh, yeah, vertical. But these people aren't coming into town because they can't count on a steady tax rate. You yeah. know, they don't know what the tax rate is going to be from year to year. So th that, this needs to be solved before anything else happens. And, and the, the politicians are not addressing it at all. And if you, so if you were starting a business, where would you want to locate? You know, as beautiful as the surrounding, and it, it's a shame, it's such a great area in so many ways, but I just, you, you'd be irresponsible in a lot of ways to go under that tax structure. Right. Frank. Yeah. This is another not thing. So, Yeah, I mean, this is another thing that totally, again, seeing this through my wife's eyes, she grew up in California. We had just been in San Diego a couple weeks ago and then went to Atlantic City and just like, yeah, remember in San Diego, Ocean Beach, all that really gentrified and everything. And it's, you're in Atlantic City, it's I'm like, yeah, this is, it's, it's like vacant lots. I'm like, yeah, this has been vacant since I was a kid. This is, she's like, oh my right. God, I don't believe it. Yeah, this is never, Pauline's this Prairie. <laughs> yeah, Pauline's Prairie, this has always been vacant. And she just couldn't believe it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, they, yeah, I don't know how you... Uh, it seems to me that some leader in government has to figure out a way to say, hey, other people in America are building stuff. How can we readjust stuff to a sane level to get people to actually build stuff here? Right, and Dave, Dave pointed out that Atlantic City, you know, you might think it's it's a terrible location, but it's actually a, a beautiful location. It's all it's a beach town. Yeah. You know, if, if you have high rises there, you got incredible views of, of the ocean, uh, the towns north and south of Atlantic City, and 
you know, all you need to do is stabilize the tax rate, and then you, you'll get a lot of people investing in there. And of course, uh, you know, change the perception of the town as, yeah. as being one of so so dangerous, uh, which isn't necessarily true, but. Uh, it's still the perception that's there. I mean, there's a lot more violence in Las Vegas oh, yeah. that gets swept under the rug yeah. that nobody hears about. And if somebody gets killed in in, New, in Atlantic City, it's a, a big news up and down the East Coast. So, uh, Well, when you talk about crime, you need to look at Orlando and Tampa and Miami. They all have higher crime rates than Vegas or Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the visitors, not... I mean, the FBI compares crime rates, they compare all the crimes against the permanent population. So if you have a lot of commuting workers and you have a lot of visitors, they aren't considered, they aren't in, in, the, in the computation. So it's, it's very misleading and uh, it's one of the things that have held back the expansion of casino game. Plus they, they all think we're hoodlums. <laughs> Mobsters. Right, right. And Atlantic City for years has been been uh, couched as, as the bad example of gaming. Whenever you try to expand in, in another destination, they say, oh, look what happened to Atlantic City, you know? And, yeah, but if it had if they hadn't come in, Steve knew what Atlantic City looked yeah. like uh, well, prior to 1976. And, and, and actually, in, in, in retrospect, I should, you know, I was out there trying to tell people the truth, and that probably hurt Atlantic City because, because some people started to listen, so. <laughs> yeah, that the yeah. negatives about the mob, I mean, the prostitution, the, the, the mob, the, you know, I had, in the prostitution, I basically said, well, we may not eliminate it, but we're certainly going to improve the quality of the product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. And that happens in New Jersey also, so. Great. But USA Today had a list when we put it out about three years ago of the top 20 convention centers. And they weren't up there for a good thing. They were up there for the most crime. Chicago was number one on the list, Las Vegas number 11, and then everybody else just fell in the third. Because it's the visitors. They, the, the FBI just does not compute the, the crime numbers in, in the way that they should. And they admit it. They admit that the, the tourists aren't included and they don't mention uh, resident, like in Atlantic City, most of our workers live in the county. They don't live in the city, which, and when, in fact, when I was first proposing things for Atlantic City, that was my thought, that Atlantic City would be the business hub and everybody would live in the other counties of South Jersey. Uh, you know, I wasn't expecting that to be the place for, for everybody to want to live in Atlantic City. But There's a guy named uh, Reese Pally in her, er, early on in, in uh, <laughs> Atlantic City character. fame. He, he wanted to come in and put bulldozers across the island and, and bulldoze everything down and <laughs> build golf courses and, mm -hmm. and just build uh, an adult Disneyland. And uh, everybody thought he was crazy. But, you know, the more you look back on it, he probably was the smartest one in the room. Yeah. Well, thanks for attending. We appreciate it. That was interesting one, uh, conversation. One thing, we, we, we really, really haven't addressed the one issue that we were <laughs> brought here to address. You mentioned it briefly. But the three issues that the, that this situation is not dead in, in New Jersey yet, North Jersey. There, there are three issues that are involved. One is the tax rate. It needs to be high. And the legislature needs to pass something before the referendum. Now, I don't know that they're going to do that. Um, I mean, I know some of the legislators want to do that but, I, that, but that's one. One is to get a high tax rate so there would be meaningful dollars for seniors and Atlantic City and a smaller amount for racing. The second one is to restrict it to just the two communities involved so you don't repeat the 74 referendum where it's not in my backyard. It's somewhere else. It's in a place where I might want to go, but I don't, I don't want the traffic and I don't want all the crime and all the other stuff that you read about involving me. And the third was physically, it was actually determining what percentage goes to Atlantic City, what percentage goes to seniors and disabled, and what percentage goes to racing. And then what other percentage is left, uh, you can pick those up. But they don't want to answer those questions. But if they did, I think the chances of the referendum would change dramatically. 
And I think two years from now, you'll see a bill just like that, and we'll, we'll having, be having this discussion again. So, yeah. so thanks very much. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys.